Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in our talk, Creating Opportunities to Connect. I'm Andrea Fletcher, or Bitwise Andrea, and I'm a software engineer on the social team. I'm joined by Kelly Mays, also known as Sister Alligator, Hello. a product manager on social. We're so excited to be here and share all the great things that the social team has been working on. The social team has three main focuses, communities, communication, and reference content. I'll start off talking about communities and the work we're doing there, and then Kelly will take it away with communication. Out of all the group-related feature requests, there's one that we've seen requested above all others, and that is group name change. <laughs> you may have seen it in our 2021 roadmap, and I'm excited to give you all a sneak peek of how it's going to work. Let's dive in. So the group owner will be the only one able to change the group name, much like any other high-level group information like the icon and description. We are introducing a cooldown between name changes as well as a fee to ensure that group name changes are mindful and minimize potential for abuse. Keep in mind that the values mentioned here are subject, subject to change. A couple things will happen when you change your group's name. First, the most recent previous name will show up in group search right under the group's current name. All of the previous names of a group will be visible on the group details page when you hover over the previous group names tooltip element on desktop or click the corresponding button on mobile. You may recognize this from the profile page, like how we show previous usernames. So how are we notifying group members? If you're in a group that has changed its name, you will receive a direct message with information about the change and a link to the group details page. And there are two major things to keep in mind with the way that we've implemented this feature. Group search will not support uh, searching by previous names. This means when you change your group's name, it's not guaranteed to show up in search results for the previous name afterwards. And previous group names will be recycled after the cooldown period. This is different than how usernames work. This means a group can be created with or change its name to your group's old name after 90 days have passed. And that is it for group name change. If you have any questions, please keep them in mind for after the talk is done. We'll have a Q&A section. And as far as when this feature will be in your hands, we are targeting by the end of the year, but that date is also subject, subject to change. Next up, community management. Right now, there's not really a good way to keep bad actors out of public groups permanently. We believe that moderation and civility are important, and we want to provide you with the ability to manage your communities. We have a few projects in the pipeline to help you do this more easily. And the first thing we want to do is support banning users from a group. The behavior of this will be the following. Any number of users can be banned from a group. When a user is banned, they won't be notified in any way. They'll just view the group as a guest would and not have the opportunity to request to join. Users with the kicked lower rank member's permission will also be able to ban users from a group. And all of these moderation actions will show up in, a new, uh, in the audit log under a new action type. And we've also had similar requests for things like the ability to mute users. And since, group, since groups already have the ability to uh, make a role set and not have uh, people in that role set interact with the group and post on the wall, we decide to add the ability to change a user's rank to the wall via the dot, dot, dot menu on each post. This option will be available to users with the permission to manage lower rank members. This quality of life update will be available to users in the next couple weeks, and we're still in the planning phases for banning users. And finally, in-game group join. We want to allow users to join groups from within experiences so developers can grow their communities more seam seamlessly. <laughs> so this API will look a lot like other prompt functions taking in a player instance and a group ID. And this is a mock-up of what that will look like in action. Based on the success of this request, you'll be able to seamlessly offer and experience perks or benefits from when users join your group. Initially, this feature will be enabled only for groups that are the owner of the experience. And after monitoring our initial rollout, we intend to open up this feature to groups that are owned by the owner of the experience for user-owned games. And long term, we want to support joining any group from any experience. We just want to make sure we do that mindfully and with the right settings and permissions in place. And that is all for me, and I will hand it over to Kelly. Thank you so much, Andrea. Hi, I'm Kelly, known as Sister Alligator on Roblox, and I'm the lead of the communication team. Uh, I've talked to a few of you in the Roblox community space lately, uh, where we've de been demoing spatial voice. 
our vision for communication is ways of talking with each other within the metaverse that is very immersive, very realistic, and very natural. So I'll start out with a short demo of our latest feature. I think. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're getting audio for this. Roblox games that have enabled All right, eyes closed. Go Andrea, go Andrea. Woo! Hey, there you guys are. I'll stay with Kelly. <laughs> Thank you, because I got lost. I look like a giant grandma <laughs> there next to you. Oh, hey, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Hey, you guys are here. We heard a oh. <laughs> oh, see, now I'm giant next to you. Look at that. That's awesome. Wake up in the morning, get your egg. I have a quest. I have to hit this egg 5,000 times. What? <laughs> Incoming. Oh, whoa, you can actually duel? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right, you are on. Oh, whoa, that looks cool. <laughs> Wait, I don't, I don't know what to do. I've never dueled anyone before. <laughs> just go and find the biggest monster we can tackle. All right, let's All right. do it. Horribles are easy. easy. I know. Should we do the world event? Sure, let's go. All right. We're, We're the, the social, social team. team. And we love, we love voice. voice. All right. <laughs> Maybe a little, maybe a little laggy to fix, but um, Spatial Voice Beta is here. Uh, this is something we've been working on for a really long time, and we're really excited to share it with the community. As of today, anybody can add Spatial Voice to their experience, and people who have been invited to test the Spatial Voice in Beta can use Spatial Voice in anywhere that it's enabled. All of you have been pre-approved for Spatial Voice, so you can all use it in your experiences and on the platform today. Coming soon, we're going to expand to everybody who's over 13 who's validated their age with a real ID. And that will make uh, you know, even more players able to enjoy the stuff that we're building. We've seen great adoption. We have over 16,000 games, 16,000 experiences that have enabled spatial voice. And that number is growing every day. Here's a few of the things that people are saying. Game changer. That's what people are calling this. It's really taking communication on Roblox to a new level of immersion and freedom and opening up new avenues of creativity for the whole community. So every time I go into the Roblox community space, I get mobbed with people asking me questions. And most of those questions are about moderation. Here are some of the answers to the most frequently asked. First off, can we swear? The short answer, yes. Um, however, there's zero tolerance for bullying or harassment. We're in the process of creating 13 plus communication standards, which will more clearly draw the lines between um, you know, what's accepted and not accepted on the platform. But for everyone in the beta, we trust that you have a good understanding, a good internal compass about what bullying and harassment is, and just don't do it. Um, so swearing with your friends or in the context of like maybe dying in a game or something, like that's totally fine. It will not get you kicked out of beta or kicked off of Roblox. Second, how are you going to moderate? Uh, great question. Voice moderation is very hard, as we see in the whole industry. We are more than ever relying on the community to help us moderate and keep voice safe for everybody. That means reporting bullying and harassment when you see it. Unfortunately, we have had some incidences of harassment on the platform already, and we've removed some accounts for Roblox because of that. It also means that we're looking at reports, as well as recordings, as well as community signals like mutes and blocks. So when you see bad stuff happening, make sure that you're using all of the tools to keep the whole platform safe for everybody. Will you require phone and ID? Um, short answer is yes. Again, RDC participants, you've all been pre-approved. You are real people. We literally know that because you are here right now. Uh, but we can't meet everybody in person. So for most other accounts, we're asking people to validate either a phone number, if they're fairly, um, they have a long history of participating in the platform, or an ID for most of the general public during beta. And finally, is it going to be filtered? Uh, <laughs> short answer is no. Voice filtering real time is a super hard technical challenge. It will not be the same as text filter. Maybe someday in the future, we would love to be able to offer that. Uh, but for now, voice is a free communication platform that is kept safe through moderation, community self-enforcement, 
and making sure that we're validating that they're real people. We plan to expand upon the voice beta to give all of you much more control about how to integrate voice with your experiences and with your community. I'm really happy to announce today our first API has been launched and announced on the Dev Forum. It's the Voice Enabled API. This API will let you see which players have enabled voice. The Roblox community space uses this API to match people together um, in, a, in servers so that voice people can be with voice people and talk to each other. And I'm really excited to see what kinds of things you can do with this to make voice more uh, embedded in your experiences. Finally, communication is not complete without text chat as well. Although voice is an awesome, immersive feature, we know that there's a lot of people on Roblox for whom text chat might still be their preferred way because it's safer, because it's easier for them. And so over the next year, we're increasing our investment in experience chat. We're modernizing the UI. We're making it much, much easier to add customizations uh, so that you won't have to fork the code. And uh, it'll also be just a better platform for us to expand upon and add new features into chat and keep it safe for everybody. Cool. Finally, plug for Roblox Community Space. This is the best way to stay updated with the social features. Most of the things we've talked about today will be integrated with this space as a way to demonstrate what it looks and feels like and um, get your feedback on how to improve it further. You can visit the Roblox Community Space and very soon, we are going to be open sourcing it. We're going to allow this place to be, we're going to uncopy lock it so that you can open a copy of the actual source code in Studio, browse through to see how we did stuff, and reuse anything you want for your own experiences. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>